I need to find some foil first. I must have seen some earlier. Time to make a portable Faraday cage. Hope this works. I don't think it's time for that yet. This box should keep the drive safe. Nothing. The electromagnetic pulse from the door must have destroyed the USB drive. I need to transfer the evidence to a drive before Victor can destroy it. Okay, it's transferred. All right, I just might be able to get this through the door safely. Are you okay? Are you okay? He's out cold. I should find help. Hello, Nancy. <gasps> You're awake. Well, that's unfortunate for you. Victor, why are you doing this? Stay out of the lab. That was the one thing I asked you to do, and you couldn't. You see, Nancy, I knew Nico had something hidden in here. I just couldn't find it, which is why I asked you to stay out. You got away with murder. Why not make a break for it? Why the elaborate plan? Murder investigations don't just go away. Someone had to take the fall, Nancy. You were supposed to give someone a push. That friend of yours sold you short. That's why you're here. You were supposed to drum up enough evidence to get Ryan put away. But no! You had to screw that up. Then I handed you Ellie and Mason. Handed them to you on a big silver platter that said, Look how guilty these two are! You knocked me out, and then planted the key card. That should have sealed the deal, but you couldn't leave it alone. I guess I should be congratulating you for being so sharp. It really is a shame I have to kill you instead. Goodbye, Nancy Drew! The cage won't last long against the coil. I'll need to find a way to get out without getting electrocuted. Did that. I bet Ryan's electrical components will help here. This must be the schematic for the circuit. to get this working before it's too late.
Got it. This should give me a chance to escape. What are you doing? Stop that! Dear Hannah, Victor was rushed to the hospital and then to a courthouse where he was charged with the murder of Nico Jovic. Due to his attempts to subvert justice, he's been denied bail until his trial. Word is he's willing to strike a plea deal for leniency. But I doubt there will be much to be found. The potential buyers Victor had been courting came forward immediately. It was quickly proven they had no idea about Victor's involvement in Nico's death. Regardless, they decided to cut funding for the lab immediately. I can hardly blame them. Mason snuck back into the lab the night after Victor's arrest and made off with a drive containing years of his and Nico's research. Gray spent weeks chasing him down until he finally caught him trying to make a sale at the Technology of Tomorrow conference. After a heated public argument that sent the Technology of Tomorrow bloggers into a frenzy, the two reached an agreement. Gray promised all due credit would remain with Mason and Ellie, provided they assist him in finishing Nico's work. A video of the argument titled Epic Dork Fight was posted online and went viral almost immediately. Within two hours, Gray was fielding calls from philanthropic backers wishing to fund their new endeavor. Mason, on the other hand, was fielding date requests from viewers who clearly have a profound affinity for the lost art of arguing. Allie was surprised at first to hear that Mason wanted her to assist with finishing up Nico's work. She agreed to stay on until the first publication is completed. After that, she plans on doing whatever it takes to get back home. She's not sure what her next endeavor will be, but she's excited to make that decision alongside her family. Finding out what had happened to his best friend changed Gray almost immediately. For the first time since his breakdown, he decided to fully re-enter the world of science. He took the lead on finishing Nico's work and opening the majority of the research up to the public. Some of the work he plans to destroy, as he promised. Although she had been exonerated, it wasn't until Ryan knew exactly what happened to Nico that she could begin to move on from what happened that night. She decided to stay with the team during the next research phase on the condition that she can personally address all safety issues before each experiment. More than anything, Nico wanted his work to make the world a better place. I'd like to think he'd be very proud to see the team working hard to prepare his work for public release. The fact that Nico Jovic's name will be known the world over, while Victor's won't, again proves what I always believed. The world fondly remembers those who always give, and soon forgets those who only take. Can't wait to see you. Love, Nancy. Around here, they say, it's a wicked place. Abandoned years ago by a family who could no longer take the endless nights when the restless spirits of the past haunted the grounds of Thornton Hall. Jessalyn Thornton dared return, only to vanish without a trace. It's up to me to save her from the ghost of Thornton Hall. Hello? Anybody here?
You have two messages. First message. Hey, Nancy, it's Joe Hardy of Joe and Frank Hardy. I'm calling about that whole security video ping thing. It, it turns out it was Victor. Also, I found out that you have since solved the case, so please disregard my earlier message, all right? Well, okay, goodbye. Remember, that other message is no longer relevant. You should probably just delete it. Message two. Nancy, ah, pick up, pick up, pick up. Uh, when you get this message, you should run as far as possible from where you are right now. Don't even look back. Your life is in danger. This is not a drill. Hang on, Frank wants to say something. Nancy, please be careful. I just want to tell you that I've always... Message length exceeded. You have no more messages. Gummy Bear Theatre presents Romeo and Juliet, starring Bear 1 and Bear 2. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks, it is the east, and Juliet is a gummy bear. Gummy Bear Theater presents The Deadly Device. How does Ryan know the title of the game? It's too meta! I'm just a gummy bear! I have enough trouble with simple concepts! I'm blue! Ah! <laughs> gummy Bear Theater presents Improv. I need a name and an occupation. You, there! Um, name, um, Red Gummy Bear? Occupation... Gummy Bear! Am I doing it? Yes! You're amazing! I can't believe you're just coming up with this stuff! What's up? Deirdre, this is Victor. Your father gave me your number. Oh yeah, you're calling about Nancy or something? I was considering taking her on as a detective. What are your impressions of her? I'm glad you asked. Stay away from her. She is a mess and a half. She supposedly solves all her cases or whatever, but that's not totally true. Most of the people she claims are guilty are totally innocent. A little while back, she was even arrested. So you know what that says about a person. My dad says you're some hotshot researcher, so I imagine you can afford better. Great. I'm glad I called you. Me too. She's a complete narcissist. She's grossly incompetent, she rushes to judgment, and no one really likes her. Spread the word. Gummy Bear Theater presents The Tragic End of Two Gummy Bears. What a great day to be a gummy bear. I hope no one eats us. Mmm.